Hi, so I get asked about these a lot. Not lead acid in particularly, but batteries in themselves. And the questions I get asked are, how can I make them live longer? How can I reduce the price? How can I get more out of them? Well, the issue really isn't so much to do with the battery. I mean, if you think about this, it's about 200 years old. And the reason it's still in use is because it's just awesome. I mean, it has its drawbacks, like everything has its drawbacks. I mean, wouldn't it be great if trees grew in 2.4 metre planks so we didn't have to saw them? But they don't. They, they are what they are. And, and this is what it is. It's an energy storage device that does extraordinarily well and has a huge history. Yeah, if you recharge it, it, ha it gives off lots of hydrogen. So at this size, it's not really an issue, but when you have a battery bank of them, of course, you have to provide something to take that hydrogen away. But then lithium-ion has a nasty habit of um, exploding, burning into a greasy spot. So they've all got the problems, and they all are what they are. They store energy and give it out slowly. And that's the issue. Now, if I were to plug a heater into this, it would run that heater, run it for about 10 minutes or so, and then it would die. If I unplug the heater and give it a little bit of time, everything in there would have time to move. And if I plug the heater back on, it would run again for a little bit, because everything in here moves slowly. So when we take a lot of energy out of there, it doesn't like it. It can give what it can give, and then it dies. When you remove it, it has time to settle out, and you can use it again. Now, it doesn't like that. If we do that, it will shorten the life of the battery dramatically. If we put something low power on there, like an LED, well, it'll run for a millennia because the self-discharge is greater than the amount of power the LED is drawing. So it'll last for a very long time. And because it's all moving slowly, everything will have time to move and we'll be able to see that this battery will last a long time. And that's the issue. The issue isn't the battery itself. It's the way we use a battery. We use a battery as it's supposed to be used, as an energy store. And then we put demands on it that the battery can't cope with. So we turn on our cooker, or turn on the washing machine, or run a drill, or something like that. And the same is true in electric cars. When you accelerate, you put a demand on the battery, the battery doesn't like. And so it gives out less energy than the battery contains because of the speed of movement. And because you're stressing it, it wears out much more quickly. Now it's not only lead acid that behaves like this, every battery behaves like this. If only there was something that could sit in between. Sit in between what we use it for, the load, and the battery. So that it could take the slow amount of energy the battery can provide and deliver it quickly when we need to have that quick delivery. That thing that we could sit in the middle would act like a sponge soaking up all that excess. We could do it the other way around, obviously. We have a wind generator that's in a blowy condition, producing peak power, and we're trying to dump it into the battery. The battery's not going to like that. If we had something that could soak it up and then deliver it slowly, that'd be awesome. Luckily, we do have something that can do that, and that's this thing. This is a supercapacitor. It's almost the opposite of a battery. A battery can store a lot of energy but deliver it slowly. This can store very little energy but deliver it quickly. If we stick that between our battery and either our generator or our load, it will be the sponge that we're talking about. When the load wants a whole lot of energy straight away, this can deliver it quite happily. When the generator peaks, it can absorb it, so it's like a sponge in the middle that can do that. And then it can feed it into the battery, or take it from the battery as needed, slowly. So the question is, how do you connect one of those? How do you use one of those? Well, you can use it in the same way that we use it to remove ripple out of current. Usually you put a capacitor uh, there. The capacitor charges first, and then delivers it, and it smooths the current that's coming out of your generator. And we can do exactly the same thing. We could just connect the negative to the negative, the positive to the positive. And because the resistance of this is so much lower than the resistance of this, this will be the first one that gets used or delivers the energy. But it's not the best way to do it. This is a DC to DC converter. What it does is takes a variable voltage in and gives a fixed voltage out. So if you stick that between those two, this battery voltage will vary. But then as it goes through there, this DC to DC converter will make sure that this gets the voltage it requires, because this 
charges by fixed voltage. I can put that voltage in there as long as I like. Once that reaches the voltage, stop charging. If I do that with this thing, I'm actually going to wear the battery out. If we put a DC to DC converter link between the two, then we'll cure that mismatch. And you've got to remember, in here are six individual cells. It adds up to 12 volts, they're round about 2 volts each, round about. And this is 2.7 volts, so we do have a mismatch. Of course, you wouldn't use one of these. You'd actually put a little line so it matched the battery that you were feeding. you put a DC to DC converter in between the two, and that would even out the issue that you might have with differing voltage in your supply, be it a battery or a wind generator. OK, all that seeming very rosy, but pretty passive. It would be much better if we could sense and switch. And, of course, we can do that using these things. This is a solid-state rectifier. It's just an, a switch. It takes a low-power control signal and is able to switch off and on very high powers. This one is uh, up to 40 amps at 5 to 250 volts DC. So that can handle an awful lot of power. Now, if we had three of those, we could switch that circuit using a relay controller. Something like the Millennium 3 digital relay controller. If we bung that whole thing down onto a circuit, then we would get a circuit like this that would be able to do that job. But these are relatively new ideas and they grew up because of the car industry. Because the car industry has exactly the same problems. How to get the most out of your batteries, how to make the battery pack as small as possible, and how to make those batteries live longer. And there's lots of research available on Google Scholar for individual implementations, specifically on home storage. So if you go to Google Scholar and look up battery supercapacitor hybrid home storage, you'll find lots of examples to look through there where people have developed systems on this. And it enables the use of any battery, uh, lead acid, lithium ion, nickel metal hydride, because it sorts out that problem of lower energy density. It also means that homemade batteries could be used, because one of the issues with homemade batteries is they tend to be slow. They tend to have low energy density. If you can implement a system like this, then it opens up the possibility of using your own homemade batteries that previously probably weren't very usable. Anyway, I thought I would share that with you. I hope it was of interest. Thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe.